Hi everyone, it's Brian back here with another Game Pro magazine uh, review, not review, but a look at another Game Pro magazine. This is issue number 61 from August of 1994, and you can see Mortal Kombat 2 is coming out, and it was a big deal. Uh, we also have 32x year end blowout, and they have the, there it is the 32x with the Model 2, Super Metroid, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And some more reviews, Daytona Arcade, <clears throat> Streets of Rage 3, Double Dragon 5, World Heroes 2, Jet, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Previews of Urban Strike, and Samurai Showdown. So let's get started here. As with many Game Pro issues I have, the cover is stapled, so a lot of them are ripping off. So to make this kind of easy, I'm going to actually put the cover to the side for now so I can flip through it and slide it without having to worry about it. So here you go, you got this awesome picture of a guy wrestling, a kid wrestling an alligator with a fight stick for the Genesis. Here we go, Game Pro August 1994, we have Super Sega Year End re Previews, the latest info about 32X and all the games coming for Genesis, Game Gear, and Sega CD in 1994. Clay Fighter Tournament Edition for SWAT Pro. Pro Strategy Guide, again, uh, the last month I looked at um, Super Metroid's Pro Strategy Guide Part 1, this is the second feature part of it. Here's Double Dragon 5. Um, if many of you don't know about Double Dragon 5, it was a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Turn onto Streets of Rage 3. And there's Double Dragon 5, Billy or Jimmy. You're invited to be the seventh guest. It's equal to the, um, I think it's uh, seventh guest and... Um, 13th hour? I forget the other game. But anyway, 7th guess. Other games we have here. For the CDI, the 7th guess, which I just talked about. Bonks 3, Bonks Big Adventure for the Turbo Duo. Sports games here. Um, some of them include champion the championship game series for the SNES. Um, Tip-off for Game Boy. Barkley Shut Up and Jam for SNES. Role Player's Realm, Eye of the Beholder, SNES and Sega CD, Ultima Runes of Virtue, Fantasy Star 4 for the Genesis, They for the Sega CD, Shining Force 2 for the Genesis, Shining Force Sword of Haya for the Game Gear, and Breath of Fire for the Super Nintendo. One of my favorite SNES RPGs. And they were really advertising Double Dragon 5 really, really hard. It actually came out for the Jaguar as well. Today, I'm going to party like it's 1999. Every year here at GamePro, the president dusts off his crystal ball and takes a crack at predicting the future of video gaming. This year, he asked 41 industry leaders from 38 companies to give us a hand. What they have to say might surprise you, and then again it might not. The future isn't easy to predict, but when asked to look, back, look into the not-so-distant future and speculate on what they electronic entertainment industry will look like in 1999, the experts were unanimously jazzed. Here are some of the things they had to say. This should be interesting. The electronic entertainment industry will be bigger and better than ever, probably doubling in size as compared to today. The dreams of the 80s will come in the 90s at the technological limits that have held back hardware and software. Designers are overcome during the next several years. Say hello to 32-bit, 64-bit, and higher-bit systems with stand, standard features like 3D capabilities, full motion, 3D capabilities, full motion video, 16 million colors, colors, graphics, coprocessors, voice recognition, and more. CD-based systems and one-line distribution, online distribution like Sega's channel, will 
out. <clears throat> we'll win out as pre predominant game delivery systems for the near future. But don't expect retailers like Toys R Us and Blockbuster to close their doors. They'll be stronger than ever. Look for a more look for a merging of the different entertainment businesses, music, game, and of course Hollywood. Gameplay itself will evolve, becoming more exponential, more personalized, and more interpersonal, more challenging, more interactive, and well, more, more, more. Virtual reality will be more of a reality and less of a fantasy, making for more realistic gameplay experiences. Expect more multiplayer gaming, spe especially with the predicted explosion of online services. Although the biggest game players will continue to be teenage guys, we'll see more and more girls and adults enjoying electronic entertainment than ever before. The upshot prints the upshot prints probably said it best. I was dreaming when I wo wrote this. Forgive me as it goes <clears throat> if it goes astray. But when I woke up this morning, this this morning was yesterday. 2000 zero, zero, party over. Oops, out of time tonight. I'm going to I'm going to party like it's 1999. Here's to the future. You have to excuse me. It's hard to read upside down like that. But there's some of their predictions for what it will be at, like at the turn of the century. So we have some Game Pro codes, or I'm sorry, Game Genie codes. This awesome ad for Breath of Fire really made me want to get the game. Some great uh, email in the mail in the mail section. A lot of it on Mortal Kombat. I'm, here's somebody who wrote, I'm sick of commercials that lie to us. Nintendo has an ad where they say the SNES comes with four free games and the Genesis comes with none. Then they com then the com <clears throat> in the commercial Nintendo shows the Genesis core system. Everybody knows that the core system has no games, but you can buy a Genesis that comes with a free game. What's more, the SNES doesn't really come with free games. You have to send them away and wait for them. And of course what he's talking about was the later bundle that came with Super Mario World and he mail away and get Super Mario All-Stars. Is it everything Nintendo says it is? And that's their answer to it. They just post the picture and say that. Most of the music in games is so boring. Why can't they just take famous bands, albums, and put them in the game? Cost is the main reason. Game manufacturers have to pay exorbitant licensing fees to get famous band music, and the fees are even higher if they want the actual band to perform. Still, some games have reputable music. Aerosmith in the arcade game Revolution X, Activision to Excalibur 2099 uses the high-tech music and performances of Psychosonic. Interplay's Rock and Roll Racing for the SNES used music not the words or original performances of legendary rock songs like Bad to the Bone on the Sega CD. Micro, micro, microcosm has music from Yes, keyboardist Rick Wakeman in Tomcat Alley is backed by jazz man Herbie Hancock. JVC may have Brian May, Queen's guitarist, do the music for. For Rise of the Robots for the Sega CD. By the way, Tommy Tallarico, Virgin Music's composer, has his own Capitol Records CD featuring his music from Cool Spot. Robo Robocop vs. Terminator and Global Gladiators. Is Nintendo working on a new colored handheld system? And Scary Larry replies, There's nothing in the works, according to Pete 
Peter Main, according to Peter Main, Vice President of Marketing for Nintendo at a press conference on March 14th in San Francisco. Main showed off the Super Game Boy and said that sales of the Game Boy are strong enough to eliminate the need for a new color portable. Some great envelope part, and here we have a reader report. In May, we ask you to vote for your favorite characters from any fighting games. Kate McKee of Bulger, Pennsylvania, voted for M. Bison because she uses him to beat arrogant boys who think I can't play because I'm a girl. I basically read that because uh, she's wearing a penguin's jersey. And here's a great ad for, um, they used to have these CD clubs back in the day. Or actually this isn't a CD club, but yeah it is. Um, where you buy, the, where you get like four free CDs and you have to sign up for a subscription to buy one every few months. I actually believe it belonged to Columbia House, I think. It was a pain in the butt. They'd always spam your mail. And it wasn't really worth it. Here's a special art contest for Samurai Showdown, and you can win a Neo Geo cabinet, I believe. Oh, no, the prizes are a Samurai Showdown for the SNES Genesis Game Gear, a t-shirt, or a Game Pro t-shirt. Here's another famous, Nintendo had some um, neat ads in the mid to late 90s where they'd have this just weird stuff like here's a plate of, of school lunch food the only thing you have to lose playing stunt racer fx and they talk about the game a little bit and there it is right there alien versus predator at the arcades you can see they loved it saturday night slam masters for the snes And here's the preview of Mortal Kombat 2. Much better release on the Super Nintendo because um, Nintendo actually allowed blood in it and it ended up being the superior version on the between the SNES and Genesis. see here WCW Super Brawl and there's the old Sting before he painted himself up like the crow if you can see he had his old makeup right there Sega of America coming on strong 32x on the upgrade pass a little bit about the Sega uh, 32x It was due. It's due in. It was due. Uh, due. It says here it was due in November of 1994. So this is August, a few months away. Highlight some more games for the Genesis: Sonic and Knuckles, Batman and Robin, Dynamite Hetty, Echo: Tides of Time, Taz: Escape from Mars. Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble for the Game Gear. Shining Force Sword of Halia. Halia. Desert Demolition starring Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote. And Jurassic Park Rampage Edition. Eternal Champions, a Genesis only fighting game. Bubba and Sticks. Now this is a game I never heard about. Released by Tengen. Designed by Core Design Incorporated. Interesting. Oh, it's um a bubblicious. Looks like it's a bubblicious mascot game. 
Interesting. Sega didn't have too much to show on these games, but they're on the way. We have Fahrenheit for the Sega CD, Surgical Strike for the Sega CD, and Baby Boom for the Genesis. The Mortal Kombat train keeps rolling on with Mortal Kombat trading cards. Super Street Fighter 2 for the Genesis. Got good reviews. Streets of Rage 3 got pretty good reviews. 4.5s across the board. Or 4 and 4 O's across the board and 4.5 for Fun Factor. And they say Streets of Rage 3 is like an old friend. An old friend who won't stop trying to kick your butt. The fighting formula is still feisty, familiar, but no one wants the streets to be too safe, or do they? King of Monsters 2 for the Genesis. Urban Strike. Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City. Arrow the Acrobat. Here's an ad for Blockbuster running games. Fatal Fury on the Super Nintendo, Fatal Fury Special, or this is Fatal Fury 2, I'm sorry. And here's Double Dragon 5, and I rented this once, I don't remember, I remember it being a mediocre fighting game. And they gave it pretty good reviews, they gave it 4s across the board. And they actually say, this is a well-crafted take, this is a well-crafted take a break from the Street Fighter 2 action fighting game. If you dig the cartoon show, go for this game. If you already have a stack of, hey, we got Fireball Street Fighter 2 clones, Double Dragon 5 has the licks to muscle its way into that gang. Still veteran game pros will miss Marion. The Death and Return of the Superman. From what I hear, this is actually a pretty decent Superman game for the Super Nintendo. I've actually been looking for it. Um, got very good reviews. The controls were a perfect 5. Graphics 4.5, sound 4.5, and fun factor 4.5. And they see Superman is good, though maybe not quite as good as another walk and, walk and sock fighter featuring a different caped hero, Batman Returns, Super NES, for the Super NES. However, the ability to play as the different characters, plus fun, diverse character, challenging gameplay, make it a real contender. You decide which cart you think is better. If you're crazy for Clark, Kent, or you're a man of steel. Beauty and the Beast, I picked this up a few months ago. More trading card boom with the Mar Mar Marvel Comics and the comic boom, superhero boom in the 90s. Eek the Cat, didn't get too good reviews. Arrow Fighters, didn't get very good reviews. Um, they said, lovers of shooting games won't be able to resist a play or two or ten, but Arrow Fighters action won't stay with you. It's temporary thrill that eventually retreats to the hangar. Samurai Showdown for the Super NES. Here's a 3DO ad. Growing up I was uh, fortunate enough I had a friend who got a 3DO at launch. Uh, it was about $700 and I used to play 3DO games at his house. The Jungle Book. Natsume Championship Wrestling. I believe I have this game. I'm not sure if I remember correctly. Atari Jaguar ad. World Heroes 2 for the Neo Geo. Jurassic Park for the 3DO. 
out of this world for the 3DO. Here's a pro strategy guide for Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2. And this is the Genesis version, I can believe. I can tell just by the color palette. Um, oh, this is this covers Super NES and Genesis. An ad for Super or for Streets of Rage 3. Hit them like like a ton of bricks. Pretty cool. Hits a guy straight through a wall. Here's an ad for the CDI. There are 9,462 nerve endings in the human body. Why waste them on love connection? The seventh guess for the 3D uh, uh, CDI. Bonks 3 got pretty good reviews, about average 4.5s and a 3.5 for control. Nothing, nothing can prepare you. September 1994, Mortal Kombat 2 for the Super Nintendo Genesis Game Boy and Game Gear. Beauty and the Beast for the Super Nintendo. The sports pages. Way of the Warrior, I remember playing this with my friend friend that I discussed earlier who had a 3 o his house. Um, not, it was a cross between, it was like a Mortal Kombat clone. Um, not very good, but I remember it. Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. The World Players Realm, we got Eye of the Beholder. Eye of the Beholder for the Super NES. Ultima Marines of Virtue for the Super NES. Still looking for this game, The Twisted Tales of Fike, Spike McFang. Future Fantasies, Fantasy Star 4, The End of the Millennium. And Vey for the Sega CD. Shining Force 2 for the Genesis. Here's an ad for Vey. Breath of Fire, an awesome game. I love this game. Um, he gave it 3.0s across the board with the 3.5 for control. Um, if all this sounds somewhat bland, it's because you've seen such elements on these pages before. Even the storyline is is nondescript and average. If Breath of Fire wanted to make a name for itself, it should have tried for more interesting enemies, different battle screens, or butt-kicking graphics. Instead, we get something vaguely familiar. A forgettable game with barely enough breath to last. I disagree with that. I found Breath of Fire very, very fun. Uh, I love the traditional... It's a traditional JRPG in every sense, which I loved. I couldn't get enough of back then. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Game Boy. Here's the uh, part two of the Super Metroid Strategy Guide. Meridia, Norfair, Torian. Talk about the ending depending on how fast you beat the game. And
sketching. Codes for sketching. Uh, sketching, I should say. Sonic 2. The Secret of Monkey Island. I didn't know that came out for Sega CD. Rocco's Modern Life for the Super Nintendo. Flashback. Robocop vs. Terminator. Those are all for the Super Nintendo. Evolution Dino Dudes codes for the Jaguar. Here's some Game um, Game Genie codes for various Game Genie for various games for the Game Boy, Game Gear, Super Nintendo Genesis. Even arcade uh, codes. Or arcade tricks, I should say. Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. I always play it as Mr. Blob. I always call it Mr. Blob. I think it's just Blob. Return of the Ness. Everyone knows the 8-bit video games are still around, but for how long can Nintendo sustain that market even though Sega gave up on their 8-bit system a while back? Well, 50 million consumers hope so, because that's approximately how many own the NES, according to Nintendo. But how many own the unit and have it stashed somewhere in the attic? Well, Innovative thinks the 8-bit systems have some life in them and is introducing the Super 8 Converter, which lets you play 8-bit games on your Super NES. You don't have to dust off your old NES to play classics like Metroid or Dragon Warrior. You simply plug the unit into the cartridge slot of the SNES, and voila! You have two of Nintendo's biggest sellers right in front of you. Will this bring some life back to the 8-bit market? Let's hope so. Or will this finally kill off a dying system and allow us to progress forward Technolo technologically? Let's hope so. And there's a Super 8 converter. Um, with this converter, you can play Japanese and American 8 bit or SNES games. It was $60, available in July of 94. And you can contact Innovation at this number for details. I believe that it required its own power source as well. Here's the Game Wizard. The Game Wizard for the SNES, which, re which we reported on way back in July 1993, is finally here. This new game enhancer from Innovative works much like a pro action replay, and it even accepts PAR codes. However, it automatically searches for codes too. So, you so all you'll do is flip a switch, follow the on screen direct directions and give yourself advantages like unlimited lives and invincibility. There's also a space in the back of the unit that looks like a hookup for another cartridge. Innovation informs us that it's a compartment for a feature upgrade unit that will store programmable codes. If you're tired of waiting for program code books to arrive in the mail or you don't want to wait until you your favorite video game mag Game Pro, of course, prints new codes, and check out the wizard. Apparently it's like a Game Genie, except it automatically gets the codes for you. Buyers beware, this is um, people who are having problems, consumers who are having problems with the um, products. I bought the Horde for the 3DO, and whenever I save a game, it erases all my previous games. It doesn't prompt prompt me to delete old files, and even if there's a space, it deletes previous files. Why? Well, that's a bummer. Crystal Dynamics and the 3DO company would like to clarify information circulating online about the save game features of the Horde. The Horde cleans out SRAM, save RAM game area, 
<laughs> save game areas whenever a player saves a horde game. This feature is designed to ensure that the players can always play and save the horde games even when their SRAM is full. The effect of this feature is on is to erase the in entire save game area A. New revisions of the game are now available. Well, that's weird. Overseas Prospect, you had the Super Game Boy. In Japan, a month without a new game machine is like a month without sunshine. June brought us the much-heralded Nintendo Super Game Boy, a release that encouraged thousands of Japanese kids to shove their old Game Boys into the back of their closet. Remember to remove the batteries first. Short Pro Shots, Contra Hard Corps, available September. The popular action adventure series continues with this 16 meg two player gameplay, four characters each, with four characters each with their own special weapons and power ups. The 12 levels have multiple paths for a variety of gameplay. A Game Boy version should arrive soon. Revengers of Vengeance, that's a cool name. Game Boy Game, Game Gear Games, Berenstein Bears Camping Adventure. I actually, ha I think I have that. Here's Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Alone, Home Improvement fame. Sony PlayStation up Update, Sony Corporation of America has created a new division called Sony Computer Entertainment of America to launch its PlayStation in the United States. The new company is responsible for the system's U.S. release and for signing thir up third-party licenses. More than 160 supporters in Japan, including Bandai, Capcom, and Konami, have already been announced with more to come. PlayStation is scheduled to ship in Japan by the end of 1994, then in the U.S. in 1995. According to Sony, PlayStation boasts a dedicated 32-bit RISC CPU, multiple processors for sound and graphics capabilities, the equivalent of up to 500 MIPS, million instructions per second, and full-frame video at 30 frames per second. Sony has also indicated that the PlayStation is capable of 3D com computer graphics and the backgrounds will change according to the player's viewing angle. So little did we know that when this launched, Nintendo's dominance and, and vice grip over the industry would get loosened somewhat um, by the PlayStation. And gaming and the history of games and video game consoles would never be the same. Here's an interesting article I thought about, if you can see it down here. Nintendo Fitness. Life Fitness, makers of the popular life cycle and exercise equipment in Nintendo, are working on the Life Fitness Extertainment System. This marriage of the life cycle technology and Nintendo's Super NES system is integrated in to make exercising more interactive and enjoyable. Augie Nian Life Fitness president and founder called Extertainment a revolutionary breakthrough in the age-old quest to find 
to find an exercise program that people will enjoy and stick with. An Associated Press story listed the retail price at around $1,000. So it was a exercise bike with an SNES and, an, and a bicycle game in it, a pedal, uh, extratainment bicycle game in it. Street Fighter 2 movie news. The update continues from Capcom and Steven D'Souza, the director, screenwriter of the upcoming Street Fighter 2 movie. Here's the latest cast list. Gal Jean-Claude Van Damme, Bison Ra Julia. Chun Li, Ming Ni Wien, Kami uh, Kalmanog, Saget West Diddy, Ryu Byron Man, Balrog Grand Bush, Dalsim Rohan Seth, Ken Damien Chapa, E Honda Peter Tuaso, well that's hard to read upside down, Peter Tuaso Sopo, Vega. Richard J, DJ Miguel Nunez, T Hawk Greg Rainwater. Capcom has also created a new character for the movie, Captain Kenya Swarda, who is second in command of the UN forces under Guile. Capcom indicated that this that Swarda may be apt to a future Street Fighter game. ITT gave us some added information on at the deadline story last month. By the time you read this, an article, this article, a company called Turbozone Direct will have opened its phone lines, offering new and old duo games. It's also negotiating to bring other Japan, Japanese PC engine games to the U.S. market. Finally, ITT's game, IT, wait, TTI's game counter line is still active. Uh, three one zero two three seven six. Oh, I won't give that out. If you want to order products, get more information. You can call Turbo Zone Direct at one eight hundred Duo. This interesting. They were finding games for the Turbo Duo and games that were trying to get games from Japan to be published over here. Didn't quite work, obviously. And there we have it, that's Game Pro issue number 61 um, from August of 1994. As you can see, fighting games still big, Mortal Kombat still big, uh, Super Metroid, heyday of the 16-bit generation, uh, PlayStation just coming out, the 32X is at, coming out in a few months. Um, and you see unique systems like the 3DO and CDI. Uh, with the CD capabilities and multimedia capabilities taking off. Truly a turning point in the mid to late 90s, mid 90s. So I will talk to you all again. And until next time, bye.